Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to discuss about some of the diseases of maize and their management practices. As we know, the crop maize is the third most important cereal crop of our country. Among the different maize of the corn, green maize, sweet corn, baby corn and popcorn are mainly cultivated in our country. It is highly valued for its multifarious use as food, feed, fodder and raw material for large number of industrial products. India ranks fourth in terms of area with 9.89 million hectares and India's rank is sixth in terms of production with annual output of 31.65 million metric ton. And the crop maize is typically a Kharif season crop but can be grown round the year. In our country, the crop is subjected to as many as 35 different diseases which hinders the production potential of the crop. In this video, I am going to discuss about some of the major diseases of the crop that is maize. Let us start with the first disease that is Tersicum leaf blight. It is caused by Helmetosporia maidis and its synonym is Helmetosporia tersicum. The organism, when attack the crop, they initially produces a small yellowish round to oval spot okay, on the leaves. This is the first symptom that develops on the leaves. Followed by, at later stages, the spot becomes bigger and lead to elliptical spots and are grayish brown in the center with dark margin as shown in the figure. Later on the spots, I mean to say two to three spots, they coalesce together and giving blighted appearance. And the surface of the spot is covered with olive green, velvety masses of conidia and conidiophore. And the organism prefers high humidity, that is more than 85%. And 8 to 27 degree centigrade is the considered as the optimum temperature for germination of the inoculum, that is conidia. And it also helps further infections. The pathogen is typically a seed-borne organism. And beside maize, the pathogen can attack shargham, wheat, barley, oats, sugarcane, sudan grass, junction grass, teosinite, etc. Besides that, many other hosts are also there. And further, the organism, once it attacks the host, and when symptoms develop on the leaves, and on the leaves itself, at mature stage, the organism produces velvety masses of the conidia and conidiophore. And this conidia and conidiophore that born on the leaves act as a secondary source of inoculum and they spread by wind. Regarding management, we have to follow fallow clean cultivation. We have to use disease free, healthy, certified seed from good sources. And as I said, the organism is seed borne. So we have to take care of the seed. That means seed should be treated with some systemic fungicide or some biocontrol agent like Trichoderma herzianum at the rate of 10 ml per liter. Here you have to soak the seed for one hour. After one hour, you have to take out the seed and dry in the shed for one hour. And then directly that seed, treated seed can be sown in the main field. After seed treatment and when there will be good crop in the field, in the field itself at the later stage the organism can start their infection. So on the onset of the disease, we have to spray Trichoderma herzianum based bioformulation at the rate of 10 ml per liter of water at least for thrice at an interval of 15 days. Next disease is rust. It is caused by Paxinia sorghi. And the organism when attack the 
crop that is maize initially you can see minute flags that appear on both side of the leaves that is upper side as well as lower side beside that we can see circular to oval or the elongated cinnamon brown powdery pustule which are scattered over the both surfaces of the leaves and in the mature stage of the plant the pustules become brown to black and in severe condition or the severe cases the infection is spread to seed that is leaf seed and the organism that causes rust that is pachinia sorghi they prefers cool warm and moist weather and 15 to 25 degrees centigrade is the optimum temperature for their growth and infections the organism survive in the alternate host in the off season two common example of alternate host are oxalis corniculate and euclenia mexicana and these two alternate host act as a primary source of inoculum and secondary spread of the pathogen is occurred through wind borne uridospores regarding management there are numbers of management for the diseases but here i have mentioned three good management practices number one is removal of alternate host like oxalis species and euclenia species followed by collection of the crop residues and destruction by burning or burying and followed by the best and most effective management practice is foliar spray of presoxymethyl 44.3% sc at the rate of 1 ml per liter or tubaconazole at the rate 1 ml per liter at 35 and 50 days after sowing that is two spray is necessary and the spray should be started with the onset of the diseases and there should be two spray at 35 as well as 50 days after sowing of the crop next disease is downy mildew it is caused by perisporospora shorgi and it is responsible to cause the shorgham downy mildew and then philippines downy mildew another patho- uh, another disease it is caused by perisporospora philippiensis and another disease is there that is called your a crazy top it is caused by scleropthora macrospora that means these three diseases also occur in maize and in maize it is known as downy mildew and regarding symptom we can see chlorotic streaks on the leaves which is the most characteristic symptom of the disease in maize and here infected plant exhibit stunted and the bushy appearance beside that we can see a white downy growth on the lower leaf surface under humid as well as warm conditions and the downy growth as i mentioned it also occurs on bract of the green unopened male flower in the tassels and proliferation of the auxiliary bud on the stalk of tassels in the cob is common especially in case of crazy top disease caused by scleropthora prospora and the systemically infected plant they do not form cob that means they fail to form cob and if it forms somehow they are small and poorly regarding favorable environmental conditions the organism that is responsible for the cause of downy mildew they prefer low temperature that is 21 to 33 degree centigrade high relative humidity that is more near about 90% and light drizzling are most favored by the organism for their infections for their germination as well as infections and here young plants that means tender plants are highly susceptible to the disease and the pathogen actually spread through wool spores that survive in the soil as well as a which are seed borne and secondary spread is carried out by the airborne corundia or sporangia regarding management for the management of downy mildew 
always we have to use disease free healthy certified seed that should be collected from good sources and seed should be dried to maintain a moisture of less than 14% in the field we have to follow deep tillage and crop rotation for more than 3 years and rogging out of infected plants and alternate grass host is another effective management approach is for downy mildew of maize and in many literatures it has been suggested that the resistant hybrid like tnu co hm6 or co hm8 and co hm11 are highly effective to face the disease downy mildew because these three varieties hybrids or the varieties has been reported to be resistant against the downy mildew of maize besides that the seed should be treated with metalaxyl type fungicide at the rate of 6 g per kg of seed and in the field if the disease occur so we have to spray with metalaxyl plus mancozeb at the rate 1000 g or mancozeb at the rate 1000 g per hectare after observing the first symptom or the initial symptom and it should be applied twice first at 10 days after planting and second at 40 days after planting another important disease of maize is charcoal rot it is caused by macrophomina faciolina and the pathogen when it attack the maize in the field the plant will exhibit a wilting symptom and plant matures and the fungus spread into the lower internode of the stalk it happens in the lateral stage it also causes premature ripening shredding and breaking at the crown region and if you observe the infected plant very closely then you can see grace streak on the infect infected stalk and the pith of the infected plant becomes shredded and grayish black minute sclerotia may be seen on the vascular bundles of the infected plant besides that shredding of the interior of the stalk often causes stalks to break at the crown region this happen these are the common symptom in case of infected plant in the field conditions the organisms prefer dry and hot weather more particularly during and after flowering stage and the soil temperature uh, is around say 30 to 42 degree centigrade then low soil moisture and low ph that is 5.4 to 6 are most preferred by this organism the pathogen that is macrophomina faciolina that is responsible to cause charcoal rot of maize they produces sclerotia in the soil or in the infected plant parts as we know sclerotia are nothing these are compact mass of hyphae and produced by numbers of organism during uh, when when they face that food already has been uh, going to be exhausted so here the pathogen produces sclerotia and by producing sclerotia they survive in the off season and this sclerotia act as a primary source of inoculum so when this sclerotia face favorable environmental condition they germinate and they attack the susceptible host and in the susceptible host in the later stage they produces pycnidiospores i mean to say the pathogen is spread through pycnidiospores that means pycnidiospores are the secondary inoculum of the pathogen regarding the management we have to follow the crop rotation at least for 3 to 4 years with non host crop we should try to avoid the water stress at the flowering time that reduces the incidence of the diseases then we should try to avoid the nutrient stress i mean to say we should apply recommended dose of nutrient for the cultivation of the maize 
and potash should be applied at the rate of 80 kg per hectare in endemic areas because potash help to develop resistance in the plant against number of pathogens beside that soil application of pseudomonas fluorescence or trichoderma viridi at the rate of 2.5 kg per hectare along with 50 kg of well decomposed formiat manure that should be mixed 10 days before application or it can be mixed with sand and it should be applied at 30 days after sowing of the crop next disease is southern corn leaf blight it is caused by bipolaris maidis or the helm halmitosporia maidis it has two different type of races race o and race t the organism that is bipolaris maidis or halmitosporia maidis when they attack the maize crop they actually uh, produces the foliar symptom which may vary with the hybrid and the different type of your fungal isolates they produces small yellowish round or the oval spots and that appear on the leaves and these spots at the later stage or if environmental conditions are favorable for the pathogen these spots enlarges and become elliptical and the center become straw in color with a reddish brown margin that is margin of the spots will be brown color and the center will be your uh, your straw color so another race of the fungus that produces tan spindle shaped lesion with water shut margin that turn into yellow halo in the later stages large area of the leaves may dries up and they may regarding favorable environmental conditions the organism prefers warm temperature that is from 70 to 90 degree Fahrenheit and a little bit wet conditions but dry conditions are highly preferred by the organisms because these dry conditions are helpful for the growth and development of the pathogen as well as it is also helpful for attack of the susceptible crop the organism also prefers monocultures as well as less number of tillages or reduced tillages and regarding primary spread, the broken stalk, malformed or the completely rotten cobs covered with the grayish powder act as a primary source of inoculum. The pathogen also survive on volunteer maize plant and grasses. Race T also survive in the seed but no evidence of the seed survival in case of race O has been observed till to date. And on the other hand, airborne conidia are the main source of secondary inoculum and they actually spread with the help of wind as well as rain splashes. Regarding the management, like other diseases, the southern corn leaf blight can be effectively managed by using healthy, disease free, certified, as well as resistant seed. And for disease, for this disease, the crop rotation at least 3 to 4 years is highly uh, effective and we should remove the volunteer maize plant from the main cropping area. We should adopt wider spacing to reduce the humidity. We should destroy the plant debris as well as good tillage may be helpful for the management of southern corn leaf blight in field conditions. This is an important disease that is banded leaf and seed blight of mage. It is caused by Rajectonia solana, which is a soil borne organism. It has number of hosts. The pathogen has been reported from throughout the world and it has the ability to cause disease uh, more than say 70 agricultural crops. And this pathogen, when actually they attack uh, the mage crop, they produces symptom on the leaf as well as seed, as well as in the cob. So let us see. Here, because of the infection of this Rhizoctonia solani, the symptom develops on leaves, seed, stalk, and can later spread to ears. 
initially we can see white lesions that develops on the leaves as well as seed of your growing plant we can see a number of water shocked discolored alternate band which are mostly visible often brown or gray colored if you see the diagram the extreme right of the top line then the you can able to understand what type of symptom they develop in the infected plant parts later the light brown cottony growth with say small round black specks are generally developed on the infected plant parts and because of the infection of this pathogen the developing cobs they dry up prematurely with cracking of the husk leaves and if the pathogen could able to attack the seedling then whole seedling they withers off within 7 days the pathogen as we know that is called your uh, resectinae solanae is a soil borne organisms and they survive in the soil by producing sclerotia or they may survive on the infected crop debris or on the grass weeds the spread of the pathogen occurs by irrigation water flooding and transport of contaminated seed or the soil in the equipment the pathogens prefer hot and humid weather in the tropics as well as in the subtropical area they also prefer high relative humidity regarding the management we have to use resistance of the tolerant hybrid which has the ability to attack to tolerate the attack of rajuctenia and we should avoid the high cropping densities in the field we should follow at least 3 years crop rotation and we should remove all the infected traces as i said the organism is soil borne so we have to treat the seed with some biocontrol agent like trichoderma herzianum at the rate of 10 ml per liter or with bacterial biocontrol agent like pseudomonas fluorescens at the rate of 116 g per kg of the seeds in this case as already said for other crop other diseases that the seeds should be treated with such type of biocontrol agent at least for 1 hour after 1 hour the seed should be dried for another 1 hour and then we have to go for sowing the main field and beside that striping up two lower leaves along with leaf seed also gives effective control of the disease in field conditions high dispart is another disease of mead it is caused by specialotheca reliana and the disease that is head smart is characterized by large smart gall that replaces ar of the tassels you please see the diagram of the top line then it will become more clear about the symptom the galls are the first covered by fragile creamy white membranes that later rupture to release masses of dormant brown spores the thread like strand of vascular bundles appears within the spore masses giving a strange appearance and leaf like proliferations occur in tassels and partially smarted ears regarding disease cycle the fungus is externally seed borne and soil borne and the organism has the ability to produce chlamydiospores as resting structures and by producing chlamydiospores they survive in the off season that means the major source of infection is through soil borne chlamydiospores besides that the organism also can produce teleospores and by which they overwinter in the soil so on getting the favorable environmental conditions the teleospores can germinate and they can start attacking to the susceptible host crop and initially the organism they attack the seedling through roots where the mycelium develop very systematically and in the later stage the smart 
develop on the tarsals that is called your floral tissues that develop into the smart sorai and the smart may be seen on the arrows cool temperature and high relative humidity are mostly favored by the organism that responsible to cause head smart disease regarding management the field management is considered as the best practices to avoid the head smart so the field sanitation should be done very nicely and the crop rotation at least for 3 years should be done with non host crop like pulses and we should treat the seed with captan or theram at the rate of 4 g per kg of seed prior to the sowing of the crop in the main field with this i would like to thank one and all for watching this video for more video you please continue to watching my youtube channel thank you